Did you know that getting recognition for your amazing book could be a way to help you continue to market your book? I don't know about you, but getting an award always excites me. Getting an award as an author, well, you may have to scrape me up off the floor because I'd be a puddle when that happens. The truth is that awards are often overlooked as an opportunity to help spread the word about you, your book, and your message. In this episode, I am joined by one of my favorite humans out there, Bonnie Wagner Stafford, who has a publishing gift that she shares with authors she works with. And today she's sharing that gift with us as we talk about awards and how they offer marketing opportunities for authors too. In this season of the Empowered Author Podcast, I'm uncovering some unique and effective book marketing ideas that you can implement now. I can't wait to share some of my favorites with you. Let's dive in. Hey, I'm Stephanie Fegger and Empower is my middle name. Well, not really, but it should be. I believe that empowered people empower people, and I'm obsessed with empowering you, the nonfiction author, with impactful marketing strategies and tactics to help you take your important message and share it with those who desperately need it and want it and will buy it. As the owner and chief strategist of the Empower PR group and the author of several books myself, I have merged my love for reading books and writing books and marketing books to help nonfiction authors with laser focused strategies and tactics to write books that sell, promote books to those who need and want them most, and build meaningful businesses from empowering messages. Think of this as your one-stop shop for marketing insights from an author who has been there, who has done that, and understands exactly where you are. All right, so get your pens ready because I'm ready to empower you. This is the Empowered Author Podcast. Bonnie, I've been trying to get you on this podcast for a while now, haven't I? I'm a little embarrassed at how long it's taken us to get this together. (laughs) Oh my gosh, I'm so excited that you are here today. And, And I actually, before I introduce you, I feel like I have to share how we found each other because I think that is just so pivotal to our story. I'll never forget. I got a message from you. I found out later you messaged me in a couple of different places, different ways, but I think I only got it on LinkedIn at first that said, Hey, you have a really cool podcast name because guess what? I have a similar podcast name, if not really daggone close that you do. (laughs) And it was a door opener for Bonnie and I to meet. Bonnie is an amazing publisher based out of Canada. Uh, And Bonnie, I'm curious, not only the evolution of the fact that we both have the same podcast, cast names and how we found each other. But I'm really curious about how your publishing journey, I I would love for you to give people just a quick, you know, a quick high level, because even though you're based out of Canada, you don't live there. No, we don't live there. We are Canadian. It's a Canadian company. But my husband and I, who are business partners, we actually live in Mexico. And we work with authors all over the world. And of course, the book sales market is all over the world. So that that doesn't really matter. But it was almost seven years ago at the time of this recording, when we were kind of looking for something different. And we didn't want to be part of the urban rat race. And we were spending a crazy amount of time in the car on commutes. Like we did the math one day. And it was the equivalent of eight weeks a year. No. Of awake time. Okay, so hold on. So Canada has bad traffic too, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. And we were we were living in Toronto, so biggest city in Canada. Yeah. You know, and we were lived a, a little ways out of city center. And both of us at the time were working in city center. But it was just like, oh my goodness, I do not have eight weeks no. a year to give to my commute. So that was it was a couple of years until we left canada but that was what triggered us to do something different and go somewhere different and we came to mexico and bought a sailboat we actually lived full time aboard our sailboat for 3 years when we first got down here working the whole time and it was kind of nice because i have a background in journalism and then government corporate communications and have always been working with long form written mm. content. And so, you know, I was ghost writing for clients and then we just started to do self-publishing services and just evolved into here we are today, a hybrid <laughs> publisher of award-winning nonfiction. Yes. And I love your publishing name, Ingenium Books. Like tell everybody what Ingenium means. 
it's tied into the whole thing. It is. So ingenium is Latin for creative thinking, creative mind, uh, that sort of thing. And when we left Canada and bought our sailboat, we were looking for the perfect name for our sailboat. One of the things we wanted to give ourselves room for when we were creating this new life was my husband and I are both creative in different ways, but we wanted to have space in our lives to allow our creative parts mm -hmm. to come to life in a little better way. And so when we were looking for the name for the sailboat, we stumbled across this ingenium, Latin for creative mind, creative thinking. We named the sailboat. And then it was like when we were incorporating our company, it's like, oh, ingenium books. It's, <laughs> it's perfect. Be. So it just, so our, our boats, yeah, our boats name is the same name as our publishing company. It's beautiful. And I have to say, I feel like I live vicariously through you many days here in Kentucky. I'm like, Bonnie, what's the weather down there? Or I see beautiful photos of you <laughs> in the middle of the ocean. And I think if I wasn't someone who is so apt to have motion sickness, I would be down <laughs> in a flash um, to be a part of it. But, you know, I I love what, yeah. a couple things that you've said. I love how you, you, you and your husband took control of your life. And I think books give people the power to do that. I know lots of authors who have embraced kind of absolutely shift right well and there's another author you and i've had the chance to work with together who actually lived on a sailboat and still does for oh quite a long time right <laughs> that's right and she raised five kids on her sailboat listen <laughs> listen i love her and if she's listening i still i totally love you however i have three kids and i think i'm crazy i can't imagine having five <laughs> and being yeah. on a sailboat <laughs> yeah that's right i love it but i know it's amazing i also think you know how we met. So I didn't know anything of any of this about Bonnie until we got on this phone call chatting about the fact that we both have similar pretty daggone similar podcast names. And I'm so glad we did. I feel like the universe yes. does things for a reason. I agree. It was it was pretty funny. It was funny. It was so funny. Well, it was and and the context yeah, the context from my side of it too is you're being very you're being very kind to my messages, but and I was, you know, I, I wasn't really upset, but I was like, Who is this woman who <laughs> named her podcast the same as me? And oh my goodness, we have to fix this. <laughs> and then, you know, having the conversation with you and I'm like, Oh my goodness, I'm in love with Stephanie. <laughs> we just had so many things in common and you know, so many of the same ways of looking at the world and it was like oh okay I think we're gonna be just fine I know it was like you were a best friend I was always supposed to have but it took the fact that we had the same podcast to bring us together yeah if it if it if a day goes by and we aren't on the phone or if we haven't emailed something's weird you usually email me are you okay Stephanie I haven't heard from you today <laughs> That's right. Yeah. What's happening? What's Where happening? Go? Our love for for books, our love for cats. Our love for um, helping people has really blended it all, but also our love for helping make an impact. And I think that's where marketing comes in. And what I found interesting when we had that initial chat, Bonnie, is both of our podcasts are about marketing. And yet when we st stood back and talked about them, the message of what we brought to the table were very different. And we realized right then and there that your perspective of marketing as a publisher and my perspective of marketing as a book marketing strategist and coach and all the other things were a little different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and our podcast too, we talk about marketing, but we talk about other things mm -hmm. related to an author's publishing journey too. So yeah. we, we're, you know, the marketer in you would advise me to narrow niche down. And I'm like, no, no, I do what every author that I've worked with wants. It was like, no, no, I want to back up. I want to, you know, be more broad. Yeah, I know it's not the wisest thing to do, but it's okay. I always tell <laughs> people too, if you things. love, you have to love what you're doing. And if you niche too much and then you don't have fun with it anymore, then you won't do it. So, hey, you know me, I'll pick and choose battles. Yeah. I'm not going to, yeah. I'm not going to slap your hand right now. <laughs> exactly. That's no, true. <laughs> no. You. Excellent. You're Perfect. welcome. Um, but I do, there was something that I, there are a lot of things I've loved and you and I've been working together closely now for several months on really cool projects. But one of the things that I really wanted to pull from your knowledge base today and share with those listening to the podcast who are interested in unique book marketing ideas was something, I'll be honest, I never even considered with my authors that I'd worked with mainly because I, 
I would consider a lot of it to be a pay for play or a paid option. And I realized sometimes it's worth making investments if they're the right investments. Sometimes there isn't an investment, even though you think there is and, and everything that comes with it. So, you know, from the publisher's perspective, Bonnie, you know, today I want to talk about awards, awards. And I want to talk about awards as a tool to help with promotion, both before the book comes out and alignment when the book comes out and afterward. So I would love your high level thoughts on applying for awards and kind of why, because I, this, I think this is something that's really baked into your process with your authors is evaluating awards, seeing if it makes sense to apply for them. Talk to me a little bit about why, because whether they're publishing with you or someone else, award, you know, applying for awards is something that, that any, any author could consider. Exactly. There's so many ways I can start talking about this, but let me first say that not all awards programs are created equal. Yes. And so it's not just any old award. What we do at Ingenium Books is our criteria for before we will consider submitting any of our uh, author's books to an awards program is the very first thing is it has to be juried. So it's not just pay your fee, get on the list, everybody that enters before the date gets, and there are plenty of those awards programs. Yep. So, so that's the one thing that I would say is it's important that it is a juried process, meaning that there is usually a team of people that is going through and assessing the books. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could say, oh, sure, you know, just pay your fee and you could win a Pulitzer. Well, <laughs> no, this is not what there's a whole yeah. range of different kinds and levels of, of awards programs. Yeah. But the exercise is important on a couple of different levels. And what you and I are talking about here today is is giving another promotions opportunity, but there's something that we've experienced that's even more important than that. And that is the shot in the arm that it gives the author, mm -hmm. whether it's a third place or a second place or good heavens, you know, winning in a category. It is a really tough slog to write and publish a book regardless yes. of how you are publishing, like Agreed. whether you're self-publishing or working with a hybrid publisher or a traditional publisher, it is a lot of work. It is. And many times authors are exhausted and it's like, oh my goodness, I don't want another thing. And then, you know, self-doubt creeps in. It's maybe mm -hmm. it's not that good anyway, or nobody's going to like it, or I hate talking about my book. I don't want to push myself on anyone. Mm -hmm. And yes. having a credible third party say, look, this is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Here's your award sticker. It's, it's a huge boost. So I almost like that notion better uh -huh. than the fact that it gives you another promotion mm -hmm. opportunity, but, um, but it certainly does the latter. We need it. I mean, I remember at the end of my publishing journey with my first book, I told my publisher, if I have to look at this, read this, anything with this book again, I'm going to go insane. <sighs> and so getting like another kind of boost of energy to know that it was worth it, that you're right, actually, yeah. I think that is that right there is enough of a cherry on top of the process. Yeah. And it's kind of like social proof on steroids. You know, it's it, you take from a reader review to an endorsement review to an awards finalist or winning. It's kind of in the same vein where somebody else who actually knows something yep. has said that this book is is worth paying attention to. That's awesome. And I like how you mentioned the juried process, because you're right, there are some out there that are pay for play. And I think that's why I have always been so timid around the process, because I come from a background of nonprofit marketing that I always tell others what that means is I look at the, how, how far can $1 go. So I'm usually not going right. to recommend, you know, investing financially in something when a we don't know for sure if it's going to happen, or is it really worth it? And, and then, you know, and you come from a journalism background, you know, I always, I know that there's like a, a separation of church and state. There's a separation of editorial and advertising. And that has always been ingrained in my mind too, yes. that if you're paying for something, how credible is it? But I also know, and, and what you yeah. share is, you know, if, if you have that caveat that if it's a juried option or a juried experience that you know that it's going to be a credible or, or at least a, a more credible award 
experience. Yeah. And the way I think about it too, is that, um, you know, for better, or for worse, we do live in a society driven by capitalism and it is not free or cheap or easy to run Mm-mm. an awards program. So there are costs that have to be covered. I mean, there's a range of different, usually an awards program will have an entry fee and then often you'll, there will be an, another fee per category that you want to enter the book in. And I, you know, for the most part, I don't begrudge paying that fee right. as long as it's a juried awards program. And there are a couple of other things that I think I I think are important and may not be substantively important, but you know, what does the website look like? Oh my gosh. What do the the (laughs) other winners look like? What do the, what do the books look like? Do do they, do the previous winners, what are the stickers? You know, what, what does all that look like? It's not that you can say, Oh, their website is, you know, I don't like the design of their website. Therefore the awards program is not good, but almost I, and you really do want to think about where do you want to see, in our case, where do we want to see our author's books mm-hmm. featured on awards programs or for authors who are doing it themselves? Can they, you know, what are they, what is it, are they going to be proud to have their book associated with that website? So there's, you know, those little things that you can check, but you're right. There is some investment. Uh, I, I do think for the right awards program, uh, I think it can be worth it when, when you get that win because, now here's what you can do with it. Exactly. And there's a million things you can do with it, but you can create new social graphics with the new cover of your book with the sticker on it. Most of the awards programs uh, will give their finalists and their winners some sort of digital or actual peel and stick if you have physical books, um, stickers so that you get to show it to the world. You can issue a media release. You can do a whole social media campaign. You can connect with other winners of that awards program cross promote and so congratulations that. to so and so who is also a winner or a, you know and you know spread the love and spread the joy and you can work it into speeches you can you know all kinds of things mm-hmm. you can do with that and then just revel in the fact that people who spend time and energy in the book space have said that your book is worth paying attention to that right there has so much value because because on top of what you mentioned, there's something about getting the award as the author. It makes you feel good. It gives you that boost of confidence. But after the book comes out, which is when I see a lot of people applying for awards, sometimes you can apply before too. And, and I'd love to talk to your, your thoughts on both of those. Um, but after the book comes out, there's this big splash. You even, maybe you've pulled a, together a launch team. Maybe you have leveraged your connections. Maybe you've you know done some really great things. But it's hard to maintain momentum and finding things to continuously bring your book in front of people to continue to make it relevant. So find, when you when you become an award nominee or you get the award, that gives you an opportunity to continue to talk about it. This is exactly right. Yep. We have an example, uh, and thank you for raising this because so of course at, at published time or close to published time is a great time to submit the book for awards. You need to check some awards programs will stipulate what the copyright year yes. is or needs to be in order to be eligible. In fact, they, they, they all will tell you. Some of these programs will allow any copyright year. We had an author recently, her book published a couple of years ago, and she was getting pretty exhausted with, you know, how you know, pulling her hair out. What on earth can I do now? What, you know, I want to keep this book alive. And so we looked around for some awards programs for her and we found a couple. It was two years after published date and we submitted and she won runner up in the Canadian Book Club Awards of 2021. And she won in another couple of categories in another awards program. What a shot in the arm for her. That's amazing. Yeah. And what it enabled her to do is actually she then took the information about the award um, with copies of her book and her cell sheet. And um, she went around to local bookstores, local libraries, two years after publish. Her book is now in the local libraries and it wasn't before. And it was that award that 
kind of kicked all of that off. She also went, her book is a, a business book about, you know, leadership, leadership for the middle manager. It's called In the Thick of It, Mastering the Art of Leading from the Middle. But with those award designations, she also went to her local community colleges for the business programs and spoke to the people teaching the courses and said, hey, would you consider using my book in, in your classroom? So it, it, it was really... That's amazing. And you don't think about no, those that's things. amazing. I mean... Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it was uh, it was really good, and and uh, and really, it was. I I'm not sure I can think of a better outcome. Helped her feel good, gave her some renewed energy, helped other people say, "Oh yeah, that book is worth bringing into my store, my library, my classroom." Well, what you you've highlighted a couple of things that I think are important for authors to to sit on for a minute when they think about what an award can do for them. I think number one, it, it is a credibility boost, right? So like you, we've already talked about personally, you feel good about it, but it also tells the world that, Hey, this is a book worthy of looking at it. And, and in a time when anybody can publish at any time, we don't know, always know the quality. This is a yeah. good indicator of quality. Yeah, exactly. I also think that that it becomes a great tool for visibility, you know, whether it's before the published date comes out and it's something you can put on the book cover. Awesome. Afterwards that it allows for that. I love how you shared, you know, it opens doors for you to talk to other others in the, uh, that received the award or in the different categories. That's brilliant. I love that. I think it gives you opportunity for momentum, whether it is to continue to build momentum or rebuild it. Like you just shared with that particular author and it can become a door opener. You know, I talk a lot about libraries and bookstores and there is no cookie cutter approach to get into them. Like that is a unique journey to go down to get into those. But I definitely think that libraries and bookstores are, are more receptive when they see something that validates your book. I, I love that. Or even the door opener into a university. I mean, Bonnie, that's amazing. Yeah, no, it, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty impressive and pretty cool. And I have frequently heard both from our authors and from others that there is a fatigue point in always saying, hey, look at my book. Hey, have you seen my book? Hey, would you buy my book? And being able to turn that around and still aim to get some visibility, but now you can say, hey, look what so-and-so says about my book. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, beyond a review, because this is, re reviews in and of themselves are subjective. And so it's easy for us to say, oh yeah, but, you know, either what did they really think or uh, right. their opinion is different than mine. Maybe they liked it, but it's going to be, it's horrible anyway. What do they know? You know, there's that kind of thing. But with a juried award designation, it's hard to argue with that. It, it, it is hard to argue with that. You're right. Authors get tired of constantly being on the on the push. I, uh, I have a lot of authors who come to me and the book's been out a couple of years and they think, well, I guess I need to write another book, you know, move on. And I always tell them, and you and you, you do. do. I'm always going to advocate. Right, for book absolutely. If you have the burning desire to share the message, the yeah. best way to sell a book is to write another one. I am a believer in that, but I also believe that books don't have to have a shelf life. Like you can pick it up and continue to spread the word. You can make it relevant. Uh, I don't want anybody to ever feel like, oh, well, man, I missed the launch of my book and I can't bring it back to life. Uh, your story's proof. You can, you can. And who knows today it might be more relevant than it was in the yeah. past. I'm curious, Bonnie, I, I don't know if you'd be willing to share this, but I'm curious if you would, are there like a handful of awards that you think are wonderful? Like every, if you could, if you are applying for your book for Bonnie, a nonfiction author or whatever, what would be a couple that you think are good ones that you get excited about when your authors get? Well, I get excited about any award <laughs> of course get, you do <laughs> as long as they're juried but you know there are a gazillion mm -hmm. 
it really it really does depend on the book and the author and the goals yep. there are awards programs specifically for nonfiction the nonfiction book awards for example there are other awards programs that run the gamut so I'm not sure I I mean other than here's one and we've entered a few times and it's the competition is very stiff and one day darn it one of our books is going to win but it's the Ben Franklin Awards oh. from the Independent Book Publishers Association. Nice. So I I really like theirs. They've they've got a good awards program. The competition is stiff. They're not cheap. They are among theirs is among the pricier entry fee that we see in the in the in the space that we look in. They are a good one, and I would say that you know finalists or award winners in in IBPA's Ben Franklin Awards can. Holler from the rooftops. Not that you shouldn't holler from the rooftops anyway. But there's so many, it's really difficult to say, oh, this one should be the one you should go after. Uh, and this one you shouldn't. But what, you know what I always do? I go to the uh, finalist list when the Ben Franklin ones come out and I look for who's publishing, which are the, you know, who's the, who are the publishers on these books? And then I go and I look and what is that publisher doing? Mm. And what are they? Oh, and what can I, is, I look for ideas on what these other what these other published are they hybrid is it a self-published author is it so that's what, that's what I always do <laughs> well I love that and and I think that that research that you're doing is only helping your future authors because you're learning and you're figuring out what they're picking up on I also love how you we started this talking about how your podcast isn't niched enough and you think I would yell at you not really but kind of you just you just pushed it back <laughs> at me by you're the answer you're right I mean finding the right award is like identifying your niche I have a, a author I work with who is in the Christian space. Well, of course, there's specific Christian awards that he will want to look at. So figure out who, figure out, you know, I guess here's a couple yeah. questions. Ask yourself, why do I want to apply for award? What does the award mean to me? Yes. What type of award would differentiate me from someone else or elevate me in my space? Who would be interested in, in learning about this award, right? Like understanding that would help you identify the right ones. But I think, I think the moral of the story, Bonnie, is, is getting an award in and of itself is a major achievement. Yeah. And I just, there's just one other example that I just, as you were talking about this, that, I, and I need to, there's always a caveat. So there was another example from one of our one of our books and one of our authors, we had talked about, it's the picture wall, one woman's journey of being his, no, her, no, their mother. And I have believed in the value of that story as being applicable for a screen treatment. Mm. I mean, from we started working with this author years ago. And so what we did with her when we were looking for awards, it's like, okay, are there awards programs that might get us closer to that space of picking up some attention from some people who might get us closer to a screen treatment and a potential, you know, turning it onto the screen. And so even though I didn't like the website, we did submit to the Hollywood book awards. I really, it's a terrible website. It's like, <laughs> oh, come on, you guys, seriously. Anyway, but the, and then the pandemic of course hit, but the Hollywood book awards has a normally, not outside pandemic times, they have a uh, an award ceremony that's in Hollywood. And so we were all excited about that. Well, wouldn't that be cool? And you go to the award ceremony and it's in Hollywood and you've got P and they, so they specifically, according to their website, they judge the entries based on applicability for possible translation to screen. So we submitted the picture wall and we got an honorable mention in a couple of different categories. Yeah, that was pretty exciting. And then so we are in the middle of creating the screen treatment for the picture wall. You know, who knows where that'll go? That's a long journey, but we've been working with a screenwriter and uh, oh we've my got gosh. designers working on our pitch deck and um, coming to a screen near you, the picture wall one day. We that hope. is amazing. Oh, I'm so glad that you shared that story because... I didn't even know they had, I, I wouldn't even known that Bonnie, but this is what I love about your strategic mind. You're like, what's my end goal? How will this help me get there? And I'm going to find the research. I'm going to research and figure it out. And you did. And you found one. And yeah. And just because we, it, it, it will exactly. And, and so have you, have we done that before? No. When has that ever stopped me? Did I ever move on to a sailboat and live full time? No. Was I going to let that stop me? No. no. So, you know. 
Well, and that is that is good fodder and inspiration for authors listening today. You know, if you walk away anything from this, you should walk away that number one, being a podcast guest or a knowing someone else in the podcast could be the door opener to something massive I think, or something meaningful. And I think that's exactly. our beautiful relationship. I think number two, it's that applying for awards and receiving them are as much of an importance for the author as it is for a, being a door opener, a visibility kind of credibility tool for someone else. And the third, I just love what you shared is yeah. just because you haven't done it doesn't mean you can't try and figure it out and give it a shot because you there's a first time for everything and, and anyways I just love that inspiration Bonnie of course I can't think of a better way to uh to to wrap up our chat on awards this is wonderful thank you so much for being so open uh with myself and with our listeners today and and understanding how awards can be a really unique marketing approach uh, I hope this is the first of many times that you will be on our podcast will you come back well, thank you. Yes, absolutely. I will happily come oh, back. Wonderful. And you're, you're a winner. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you so much. <laughs> when I think about awards, I giggle because I remember a moment when my oldest was playing soccer. He couldn't have been more than three or four. And at the end of his soccer league, he got an award for his participation. He was so excited about it until he actually got it because the award wasn't a specific color. I think it was supposed to be yellow in his mind because he had been watching Curious George and expected he would get a trophy that looked just like his favorite monkeys. When he didn't get what he wanted, he threw a fit and my dad helping me out took him to Chick-fil-A to get a lemonade because it's yellow and maybe we could call that a trophy. Except a side note, I believe I remember that it wasn't as yellow as Eli wanted it to be. <laughs> Anyways, I'll laugh nowadays because I'd be pumped to get any award. Like I would love a participation award or mom of the year award, or I don't know, an awesome award to acknowledge my hard work as an author. Awards feel good personally, but they are also fodder for conversation about your book without it feeling like you are talking all about it all the time. You don't have to, someone else is. If you haven't applied for a book award, why not give it a shot? And if you'd like some help identifying awards to apply for, we can help. We offer one hour marketing strategy sessions where we could pull together a strategy around awards and help you make that happen. Visit empowerprgroup.com slash marketing strategy session to learn more and snatch a time to chat. I'd love to connect. All right, empowered author, you know the drill. I'm a believer that empowered people empower people. I've empowered you. Now it is your turn to empower others 